So let's go ahead and take some of the tools that we've learned with our normal distribution and let's go ahead and just kind of do an example with them. Okay, so let's suppose that, I don't know, weights of dogs are normally distributed. Okay, and we'll say that the mean is going to be 30 pounds and we'll say that the standard deviation is 5. All right, so we've got mu equals 30 and the standard deviation equals 5. Okay, so let's make some statements that, that we want to solve. So let's say, okay, let's say what is the probability that a randomly selected dog uh, will be less than 35 pounds. Okay, well if I want to solve this, let's go ahead and shade in our area. So I'm looking for a dog that's less than 35 pounds. So I'm looking for this area right here. Right, so the first thing that I want to know is like I want to know a z-score. Okay, so our z-score, remember, for our observation is going to be z equals, it's going to be x, which is our observation, our kind of our target, which is going to be 35 minus 30 divided by 5, which gives us 5 divided by 5, which gives us 1. All right, so that's really helpful. It tells us that, hey, we are, in fact, one standard deviation uh, above the mean. That's kind of like that 35. Now, we want to know the area from this point and to the left. Now, in order to do this, uh, like, real, we, we're going to need some computer software to help us out. But we can actually get a pretty good estimation of what's going on uh, by using some of our empirical rules. So rule number one, we know that from this point... To the left, that is 50%. And we know that plus or minus one standard deviation is equal to 68%. Okay, well, half of 68, which is just going to be this part to the right, is going to be equal to, so from here to this point right there, is going to be equal to 34. So what I can say is that about or approximately uh, we've got a 0.84% chance if we're just randomly selecting a dog that that dog's weight is going to be less than 35 pounds. So we're trying to figure out this area under the curve. And so the area, the percent of the curve that is shaded in is this 0.84. Now, we could, in fact, convert this to our, so like when we did this Z, remember we converted this to our standard normal, where the center's at zero, and when we come over, it's equal to one. So we kind of converted that to our standard normal, took our kind of scenario normal distribution and converted it into a standard normal. Okay, so that is super duper helpful and we're able to kind of use that. Okay, now let's say that my dog is in the bottom 16%. How much does he weigh? All right, so we could ask this question too. And this question kind of goes at this scenario and it kind of goes at it backwards. The first one we're asked, okay, what's the probability that we get a dog this small? And this one is like, well, my dog falls in this bottom 16%. Where is he on this kind of entire path? Okay, well, that's no big deal. Let's kind of start off with our standard normal, and then we're going to work backwards because what we're really looking for, this whole thing can translate 
to this statement. So we've got the probability of a random event of selecting a dog is going to be less than question mark, and it's going to equal 0.16. And so we need to kind of figure this out backwards. Okay, so 0.16, we've got to figure out the area under the curve here to get to 0.16. Well, let's kind of go back to our empirical rules again. Once again, we know that this guy is 0.68. We know that half of it, so from here to here, is going to be 0.34. And we know from here to, well, extended all the way out to infinity is going to be 0.5. So we can take that 0.5 minus the 0.34, and it's going to give us 0.16. So we know that our z-score is going to be equal to negative 1. And then we can plug it into this equation. OK, so we can say that negative 1 equals our kind of x, our observation, little x. And we're going to minus 30 and divide by 5. So what we can do is we can take 5 and multiply it by both sides. So that goes to 5. And then we can take this guy, so it would be negative 5, and we can add 30 to it. That would get us, get us to 25. And so x would equal 25. So we're able to kind of go back and forth between, like, uh, if I give you a critical point, can you find me the probability either to the left or to the right of it? Or I give you some probability, can you figure out what the critical value is? So those are kind of kind of two tools that, that, that we can use in order to answer uh, these uh, these kind of probability and uh, th these probability questions. The other thing that I wanted to point out too is that we also can we can graph out our CDF as well, just like we've done before. And for when we graph out the CDF, remember that there's really not a nice equation, we've got to kind of use some approximation techniques, but it kind of looks like this for our CDF. And the reason why I bring this up is because if we, instead of like going through this whole calculation part to calculate this out, the CDF uh, for this, my dog is in the bottom 16%, how much does it weigh? CDF takes care of this like super quickly. So remember, this goes from zero all the way up to one. All we would have had to do is go look at where 0.16 is and see where it hits on this graph and go straight down and it would tell us exactly uh, what our um, what our critical point was. So like CDF is super nice of going you know both directions on this. Like if we wanted the 35, we could figure out what its z-score was, go to the z-score point up and over, and it would kick out, uh, kick out the probability. So the CDF, like this graphic, is super useful, and there are some software tools that we can use to get it to kick out these specific values so we can calculate these instead of kind of using these just little approximation techniques. But anyways, that is a quick little example of how we can use our normal distribution uh, to answer some of these probability questions that we may have.